Hold on, let me. Okay, we're going. We're good to go. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Once again, good to see you guys. It is November the 6th, 2023. Man, we want to welcome you guys to something that's better than the World Series. It's better than the <laughs> NBA Championship. There it's better go. than the Super Bowl. Well, we want to welcome you all to another Teresa King's Fans Academy. And with that same being said, we're in the hands of our brothers, Joe Main Spears and Othello. We're in your hands for our devotion. All right, all right. Thank you, Brother O'Neill. Um, yeah, we'll get started with our uh, devotion. Um, <clears throat> definitely thank God for uh, allowing us all to um, assemble here on this call. Uh, and uh, for the prayer, uh, we have Brother Mike, John Mike Johnson. Uh, are you here, sir? I'm uh, sorry for the scripture. Uh, Brother Mike Johnson. I don't see Mike tonight so far. He's oh. usually pretty, pretty regular, so I don't see okay. him yet. Unless okay, I'm no. old looking. Okay, no problem. No problem. I'll, um, I'll read the scripture. Uh, the scripture come from uh, Matthew verse five. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter five, verse thirty three through thirty seven. Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not force, forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is in the city of the great king. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. I've just read Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. Um, and for the uh, devotional prayer, I'll say the prayer as well. May we bow our head in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for, for allowing us to experience a brand new day. Uh, thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for, for the brothers, oh, Lord, that, that is able to join, join us here on the call. Ask you, oh, Heavenly Father, where you can bless and strengthen our leaders, oh, Heavenly Father, uh, bless and strengthen our facilitators, O Lord. Bless them, O Lord, with the word that they can be able to deliver to us, O Heavenly Father. Remember everything that they prepared and where our hearts can be open to receive that word, O Heavenly Father, and then be, be effective with that word, O Lord. O Lord, if, if you don't bless us with anything else, O Lord, we still say thank you. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for, for the salvation, O Lord, and grace that you showed upon us, O Heavenly Father. For, for we know, O Lord, if, if the battle is over here on earth, we know our citizenship is in heaven. And for that, we're forever grateful. Guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Joe Main Spears, for getting us started with that devotional. Thank you, O'Neill, for jump-starting us with that word of encouragement. And thank you, Reverend Washington, for getting us started, uh, sending out the emails, getting the, the uh, Microsoft Soft team up and running tonight. We are appreciative of everything you guys did behind the scenes to get us in this place where we're at right now. We're off to a good start. There was um, Mike, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, are you able to unmute yourself? Yes, I'm here, Brother Ware. How you doing? Doing good, thank you. Very good. Yesterday was an exciting day in the life of our church, and there was something exciting went on in your household last night. You want to share that with the guys tonight? What happened what exciting? Happened exciting? Yes, yes, yes. Um, good evening, brother, and um, I apologize for my uh, lateness. Uh, I had trouble getting on, but um, for me and my household, for my household and I rather yesterday um, was for me a, uh, uh, it was it was just a very uh, blessed and emotional time because um, 
my wife joined um, Lily Grove yesterday, and uh, uh, I had been praying for it um, because we were at two different churches. But you know, God know what's right, and He know when the fullness of time for everything to occur. So uh, she joined yesterday. That was my wife, Jill Johnson. Um, so um, I just thank God for it. And, uh, you know, I shared it, uh, you know, Brother Ware after church walked up to me and he said, was that Jill? Um, and I said, yeah. Um, so uh, thank you, brother, for your prayers. And um, I wanted to just say thank you to Brother Mayberry who told me uh, many months ago uh, when I first met him, just keep doing what you're doing as a Christian man and don't let it defer you from worshiping you know, God to take care of it. So if Brother Mayberry is on the line, thank you very much for your encouraging words. And I apologize for being late. Um, uh, Brother Othello asked me to bring the scripture today and I had a problem getting on. So um, if it's been already done, I'll ask him if if I need to, you know, participate next week. But thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you so much, Brother Johnson. As a kingdom man, I stand to acknowledge my position in Christ, my place in my home, my potential for service in my church, and my purpose in the world. Brother Johnson, that is what a kingdom man does. He uses, he take care of his home, man. Make sure that everybody's in church, brother. So I want to commend you on that. That's a tough duty to do, man, but you got it done. So we thank you, we thank the Lord, and we thank Jill for making a wise choice and being a part of the Lily Grove family. Amen, amen, amen. I've been asking this question for the last two weeks, and I'm going to ask it tonight, and I want to address it to Brother Joe Main Spears. Brother Joe Main Spears, you mind unmuting yourself? Sure. Thank yes, you. sir. If some kingdom woman walks up to you and asks you, what is the assignment of the kingdom man? And how would you answer that? What is y'all assignment? I heard you guys on assignment. What is y'all assignment? How would you answer that, Brother Joe Main Spears? I think to, to be effective in the community and glorifying God. That's it. And and, and to acknowledge my position in Christ, <laughs> my place in my home, my potential for service in my church, and my purpose in the world. You a wise Good man. Good answer, brother. Friel. You Good a answer. wise man, yeah. Jermaine Spears. God bless you. You know what the right thing to say, man. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight, man. I've heard some answers tonight. I heard Jermaine's answer in two weeks ago, brother. Um, who was that brother Smith? I think it was. He answered that question, said we're supposed to do exactly what God tells us to do. Now that was short and to the point. And there's some other brother who said that we are to be a witness. We are to make disciples. All of those answers are pretty much good. But tonight we're going to hear the answer to that question. I think it's going to be in our lesson tonight. If you had any doubts about what our assignment is tonight, I believe the answer to that is going to be made available to us tonight. So I was looking forward to this part of the lesson all since last week. And here we are tonight, and I'm looking forward to jumping into it. So uh, without further ado, we're going to introduce um, Brother Frank William and Brother Anthony Hawkins. Uh, Truth and justice, I believe it is, right? <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. Well, we're in your hands, guys. Thank you so much. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Tonight we're going to be on page 99. Um, we're going to start toward the bottom. But uh, before we get started, I would ask that uh, later on tonight when you get ready to go to sleep, I would ask that you'll pray for Prairie View University. We had homecoming this past weekend. And, uh, you know, up until Saturday and Sunday, everything was going fine. We didn't have any problems, but on Sunday, we had some additional issues and things and whatnot. And I asked you to just pray for our university, those students and those parents, and uh, just keep those families in the prayers because there were some issues there. Um, it wasn't a student actual event, but nonetheless, students participated, and we want to just keep those individuals in the prayers, and they're definitely going to need those prayers for sure. Um, tonight, so let's get started. I, I, I pray I can provide as much information I can, and we can have a great conversation about uh, the topic. Uh, I know Brother Ware was saying he's excited about it because it means it's about discipleship, but uh, we'll get to that. But uh, the, the first thing I want to talk about 
is the second question there. Actually, it's the third one. Is it, it think of someone who impacted your own spiritual growth? Describe their qualities about this person and then which stand out to you. Okay. Again, it's uh, think of someone who impacted your own spiritual growth. Describe qualities about this person which stand out to you. And uh, feel free to answer. I know everybody should have that, that type of answer. You shouldn't have to worry about that one. Everybody should be able to talk about that one. Do we have any volunteers tonight first? Now, the, all right, got you. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah my my uh, first contact with spiritual growth was my parents. But uh, one that uh, influenced me the most was my grandfather. He was a Baptist minister, a pastor of a church in Yoakum, Texas. And no, no matter what, you know, he was always happy and shows that you know, he always had a good time. He didn't have much work, but he had eight kids and he was able to take care of them. So you know, it's, I think his spirituality and his belief in God allowed him to do that. Okay, Brother Woods. Brother Williams? Well, I didn't have to go outside my home. I, my dad was definitely a uh, a role model for me based on what he did to take care of his home and definitely his stand uh, and his position as Christ. He was a deacon himself, and he, he exemplified what a, to me what a man should be. He, he, he took care of his family. He loved his wife. I can honestly say in my years of growing up at home before I graduated and left home, uh, I never heard a... a my mom and my dad even exchanged words and then he uh did what he needed to do for his church and for the community so he taught me what a real man should be and that's one who stands up for the right thing and does what he does for his family and does what he can for the church as well as working in the community okay brother o'neill i have to i have to mimic and say my dad as well man and and it's funny because like uh my dad has been deceased now for 30 it'll be 34 years in january but he his memory keeps popping up his legacy continues to live on you know i'm a pk i'm a preacher's kid and uh just the 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 legacy that he left like i mimic i find myself consciously and unconsciously mimicking my dad he was a good listener talks about some of the qualities he was a good listener and i was talking we were talking in uh new teachers training sunday and i brought him up because it seems like every time i run across some of my old classmates and some old friends and now mind you i graduated 35 years ago but they always bring up my dad you know it was like man you remember when your dad took us here and he taught us this and he taught us that so just that draw that he had on people and that listening ear and the voice of reason the voice of wisdom you know, those are the things that stuck out to me. And after 34 years almost, I'm still hanging on to that, what he taught me, how he raised me. Yes, sir. Anybody else have any examples before I give mine? Brother Kimball? Yes, I had to uh, ditto everyone else. Uh, my dad was my mentor also because I watched him come from uh, eighth grade education and he raised a family and he went to work every day and I know every time I passed by his bedroom when I was going to, to my bedroom he was always on his knees praying every night he didn't miss a night that he did, he wasn't on his knees praying and as I got older I uh, learned that those prayers was for his family and for our well-being and I know on Sunday mornings um uh, we had to get up every morning and say the Lord's Prayer at the uh, breakfast table. If you ate breakfast or not, we had to get up and say the Lord's Prayer before we went to church and everything. And he kept us in church and he kept us grounded. And, you know, I saw how he, he, he was a good father and a good husband. And, um, you know, like I say, he had a great education. But you think we was uh, Donald, not going to say Donald Trump, but a rich, uh, a rich family or whatever. And uh, but uh, I didn't know I was poor at the time, but, you know, he, he kept us grounded. He he made sure that we learned the Bible and we went to Bible training, UMBTU, uh, 
uh, Sunday school, church. We was on the usher board, junior usher board, and, you know, uh, we did everything, and he took care of the home, and um, he, you know, he, he, he did everything the kingdom men Oak said would do, so it was my father. Okay. I'm not sure who this is, but it's a commitment to be fit. Commit to be fit. That would be me, oh, Brother oh. Robinson. That would be oh, me. Okay. Brother. Okay. Keep that, keep that in mind, uh, uh, water, justice, whatever you are. <laughs> but listen, yeah, right. uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit different. I have had various mentors. Of course, my dad was, was number one because uh, of who he was and the influence that he had in the community where we are from. And I have an older brother on this line, Leon Wynn who since I've been grown, been mentoring me and I've been watching him and his life and how he does things. And then when I was growing up as a, as a young boy in church, I've watched deacons a lot. I listened to deacons a lot. And so I've, I mimic a lot of those brothers who was in my life. And that's why I am uh, who I am today. All right, Brother Wiggins. Brother yes. Uh, my mother, man, my, my mother, man, uh, I was raised by um, uh, a mother, my mother and my grandmother. And my mother was a god fearing lady, man. She's, uh, she's, uh, when she used to go to church, she'd take a little tangerine, and she used to take us all the time. And, and she always, you know, just pushed us towards the Lord. And it's something that always stuck with me, man. And I mean, and she, matter of fact, she, she passed away at 93 years old. She had an angelism coming out of church. So, man, that's something that always stuck with me. And also, since I've been here in Houston, I had quite a few, but since I've been at Little Grove Church, um, 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 uh, my uh, teacher, Brother Davis and Brother Calvin. Now, I have really learned a lot from the two deacons, man. I'm going to tell you, they, uh, I learned a lot from them because I, when, when I see them pray, it's, it's amazing how they pray and what they do to take time to try to teach us how to pray. So I don't say a lot, but believe me, I'm here. Try to be here and listen, but I had to say something tonight. My mother, yes. my mother, man, well, I mean, all my mother prayers is what got me here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. You, said, you said Deacon Davis and who? What Deacon? Deacon, da Deacon Davis and Deacon Carraway. Carraway, okay. Thank you. Okay. Carraway. Deacon Davis and Deacon Carraway, man. I mean, they, they, they really take time with us and they give us, or they, they give us the opportunity to pray. You know, and uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I give them a lot of reverence, man, because I really respect them gentlemen a lot, because I really have learned a lot from them. All right. Brother Thompson, Brother Melvin Thompson. Yeah, I would say uh, my uh, my great aunt, uh, who was a Watchtower person. I don't know if you're familiar with Watchtower, but they uh, they mm -hmm. evolved to Jehovah Witness. Okay. And. Uh, what attracted me to her was that she lived the walk she taught and the faith that she believed in. And uh, one of the things that happened with the uh, watchtower, they would come by once a month to, uh, to collect dues. And I asked her, I, I say, uh, hey, Amir, wh why do you give them money? And she said, well, I, dis I identify with, with this group. And I say, uh, do you believe everything they believe? She said, I give them money, but I believe in Jesus. <laughs> and so her theology was 100% on point. And because of her lifestyle, it attracted me to, to want to uh, emulate her and uh, uh, I learned at an early age that all Jehovah Witness are not going to hell and all Baptists ain't saved. So that was a good experience for me. Yes, sir. Well, I, I'd have to say for me, it would have to be my dad. Uh, my dad is a pastor. Um, my dad uh, married my mother. I think I was six, maybe I can't, I don't remember. They've been married 43 plus years. Um, but my father stepped in and there was just some, some calm there. 
there was some uh, some order to two bad boys who weren't bad, I would say, but those individuals, you know, we got some additional structure. Uh, my mother didn't play any games. My dad didn't play any games. Nor did my grand my grandparents. But uh, when he became a pastor, he became a minister. There was just some some stuff that we started to change, and and we grew. We grew in the word as a family together. I think uh, Reverend Washington, you would know when you first start, you you accept your calling. You just it's it's by the book. You do it this way, and it is what it is. But over time, you start to understand that it is. How can you provide the information for your family so they can understand it and then use it? And that's what I think my dad started to do. So I started to watch him and I started to pick up on habits. And um, this weekend when I was at Prairie View, so a couple of young men were like, hey, you know, I said, hey, this is my father. Like, oh, you know what? This young, this, Mr. Hawkins mentored me. And then I was like, you know, I don't like to hear that from people. I was, I'm a little shy. It may not seem a way, but I'm a very shy individual. And they said they learned from me. Well, I wanted to say, well, I learned from him because all the things that I taught you, I learned in home. I learned at church. I learned from my my great up my uncle, Pastor Tyree King, just sitting in church and listening. My mother being the pianist at every church that I belonged to and being able to relate to what was what was provided. So I would definitely have to say my dad and my grandfather, Elijah Simmons, who's no longer with us, just those two gentlemen walk with God so much and you can see how everything changed. You know, uh, we weren't wealthy, but we were rich. We were rich because we had that family togetherness and no matter what we did, we were just blessed in it. You know, we didn't have a Benz, but we were always in a car that we get where we needed to go. We were never hungry. We may not have went to Houston's or went to a fine restaurant, but we ate well. So those things for me, it just made me understand that I know for sure there's just something about being uh, uh, provided for by a godly man along with a godly woman. And that's what I could relate to. So I would definitely have to say my father. Um, it's Brother Bolton. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's Brother Bolton. I said I didn't want to talk, but I'm going I'm to tell you about my, my past history. Yes, sir. I, have Go ahead. Uncle. I had a daddy. I never did get a chance to meet him. I mean, his birthday was on the same day. Mm-hmm. But I thank God for my for his brother. It, it, that was my uncle. He, he did everything he could for, for me and, and my two brothers. So he's my mentor. He set the example for us. He lived a life for the Lord. He was a super, Sunday school superintendent, speaking in the church, sung in the mill course. He, he was a God-gifted man. And he showed us how, he, he showed me, how family should be raised. He, he had two boys and one girl. And right now, one of them is a minister and, and all of them love, love oh Christ. And right now he's gone, but before he passed away, I made sure that I told him, I thank him for all he had done for, for me, and my, me and my two brothers. My grandmother raised us on my mama's side, but on, on my dad's side, she said she wanted to just take two of us. My mom said, my, my mom, my grandmother on my mama's side, she said, no, if you can't take all of them, she said, I'm going to take them. She, my grandmother on my mom's side, she wanted to took us and she wasn't able to go to church, but she made sure that we went to church. We used to walk to church, I mean, several miles to go to church. We had no time, but I thank God for my, my grandmother on my dad's side, my uncle, he used to come pick us up in the station wagon. We all loaded up in that station wagon with my grandmama, and they took us to church. Stay in the church all day, all all day, and all night basically. Never, nevertheless, I thank my uncle for showing me how how families should be raised. I never seen him. I never seen him whoop his children. Never seen him raise his voice. Never seen him drink, nor smoke. But I thank God for him because he set the example. I never, I, I've never seen it unless I seen it through him. I thank God for him. He, he's gone now, but. Hey, I know that he was, he was you know, impacting my life and my brother's life. My brother, he's a minister as well. I thank God for him. All right, Brother Bowden, I think there's a, there's a commonality in everybody that uh, just spoke about who, who was actually the spiritual growth that allowed them to help with their spiritual growth. That individual themselves had God in their lives. That individual stepped in when somebody may not have been there 
and provided something that you needed in order to start that path for you, to give you that nudge, or just to help you along the way because you were in need of something. You might not have known what you needed, but you are still there so you can go ahead and continue your journey. Um, Brother O'Neill, if you don't mind, can you go ahead and start? Can you read something for me? Can you read that uh, paragraph right below there, that question? Start with discipleship takes. Yes, sir. Okay. Discipleship. discipleship takes boldness, confidence, love, awareness, commitment. Perhaps you use some of these traits to describe the person in the previous question. Difficult conversations on subjects of truth, sin, and redemption aren't easy. They require courage. People don't always want to hear the truth. Discipleship isn't necessarily fun, but neither are drills, conditioning, or weightlifting. Yet all of that is necessary to strengthen our muscles. Similarly, discipleship is necessary for a kingdom man to pass on a spiritual inheritance. I think we all have played some type of sport in our younger days whether we played some type of football, basketball, or we ran track, or we just played in the neighborhood. What I know to understand is, in order for you to get better, you have to literally work on your skills in order to get better. And that's just like the Bible. In order for you to understand what the Bible says, you got to pick it up. It just can't be a, a placeholder on your desk. It can't just take up space in your bedroom. You have to crack it open every now and then, start to, to rub off some of that dust and then you need to start reading some of that scripture, because if you don't, then you'll stay where you are. You'll never grow. And a matter of fact, it, it is talked about spiritual inheritance. Uh, it brings me to Proverbs 13 and 22. Proverbs 13 and 22, 22, excuse me, says, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the, for the just. That means you gotta, you, you have to speak. You have to bring that information to your family because if not, who's going to do it? Now, if you're not there, you know, God is going to bring somebody there. Like Brother Bolton has said, his uncle. Right then and there, his father wasn't there, but his uncle stepped in and provided for him, right? Uh, Brother, Brother Thompson had talked about his aunt, said he was, she was a Jehovah's Witness or a life tower, but somebody stepped in that could provide the needed information. Not just information, but the needed information in order for you to continue. Because if not, where will we be with the, with the wrong information, right? The boldness, the confidence, right? Brother Ware has talked about in many issues and many times we have talked about saying that we needed to be bold. We have to stand up for what's right. And being right isn't necessarily being with the group, right? In, in order for, like Brother O'Neill and I, we, we, we deal with students on a regular basis, right? He talks about those individuals, those young men that he talked to and stating like, hey, I've been in your shoes. I was not right. But now being a vessel for God, I am going to be bold and talk to you about who God is and where I am in reference to my spiritual journey. Right. So we have to understand that. Also, confidence, love and awareness. Right. There has to be love in your heart. You can't be hateful. Right. Who, who wants to be around somebody who's hateful? I know I don't. I don't want to be around that. That's not that's not an attitude that I want to be a part of. And in your home, you want to show your family what that is, what that love is. I don't have a family. I don't have a wife. But I want individuals to know that I am kind hearted. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing, young lady? I try to speak. Right. So those examples that you see, you want to share that information. And I, I think that's something that we we learn. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we read it and what we read, we utilize, right? And then this last word, this commitment. We have 57 men on this call tonight. I remember in the past, we had over 70 plus. We may have had 79, but in the midst of it, that core group has been around 50. So 50 men, whether they are seasoned individuals, those individuals who are somewhere in the middle of those young men who are in their early 20s or early 30s who are saying, you know what, being a member of Lily Grove, I, I'm trying to do something else. I want to attach myself to some spiritual growth, right? I want to be a, a, a kingdom man, and therefore I want to make sure I participate. So as we move to page, <clears throat> excuse me, move to page 100. Oh, I'm going to read it for you. Go ahead. 
Brother Hawkins, one question. Yes, sir. Um, you had Brother O'Neill read that paragraph, and in that paragraph it says, discipleship is necessary for a kingdom man to pass on a spiritual inheritance. Yes, sir. What is that? What is the definition for a spiritual inheritance? What uh, What is that? Well, Brother Ray, how about you give me your definition, then I can give you mine. You tell me what I mean, you feel is a spiritual inheritance. Do you have something of an idea what you feel a spiritual inheritance is? No, you know not. So let me say this. I I think it is something that is passed down from heart to heart and from person to person, right? So there has to be some form of communication. You have to sit in a in a setting where you can listen to the word. You have to li you have to sit into a setting and you you start to see what it is and how people move in order to find out what that is. And then from that point, you start to learn and, and check and, and look at those things that you can find a true answer for yourself and what God says it is on your own, right? I think- um, Brother Hawkins. Yes, sir, go ahead. You 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 answered it already. If you just read that Proverbs 13, you that's yes, the answer to that question. I got read you. that Proverbs 13 again when you were saying that. Yes, sir, Brother Jones, you do realize sometimes I say something so somebody else can step in and preach for me, right? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, want, I want you to talk now, Brother Jones. You no, don't say no, you, but you Go quoted ahead. it. You, you had it written. But you quoted it that you had that when you had a spiritual, if, if you got that, your, you spiritually developed already. When you teach that to your children and your grandchildren, that's what we've been talking about this whole time. Yes, you passed that on. Yes, and, sir. and so that proverb writer is right on when you quoted that. that that's the answer to me. Yes, sir. And, and and you know, and can I say, Go ahead, Brother Neil. Can I say? Can I say this, Brother Hawkins? Go ahead. When, go ahead. when we all, you ask your first question, all the people who meant so much to us, they left us the spiritual inheritance. That's, That's it. it. Exactly. That's it, right exactly. there. Definitely, definitely. Well, Brother Jones, who are you passing that spiritual inheritance to? I'm a work in progress trying to get it to my family. <laughs> So y'all pray for me. I'm trying to trying to get it to my family, you know. I but I gotta put some more love in it, like you said. Oh, I gotta man. have that love part in there and, and and that'll help me to progress in that. Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead, Reverend Washington. Uh brothers, uh, again, great, great dialogue here. And brother uh, Hawkins, you on you doing fine. I think brother Ware uh just want us to not miss a nugget because I have it highlighted in my book as well. I have highlighted in my book as well, because he, he says spiritual uh, inheritance. That means that's a criteria to the inheritance. They're natural. I'm sorry, they have physical inheritance, which means I can leave money. I can leave property and all that. Yes. But he's not highlighting that. He's talking about spiritual inheritance, which means there are some intangible things that have great value, not just now, but in eternity as well. And, and those who possess it, mustn't bury it they got to pass it forward and i think uh as will jones brought out this whole topic that we're dealing with in bible study lesson one which you guys are doing so well is life on life discipleship there's life on life discipleship mm -hmm. i don't care what church you go to they're going to tell you to study your bible read your bible and i'm going to agree with them you need to study and you need to read your bible you cannot it's indispensable but at the same time, your greatest levels of life, of growth rather, is going to come from somebody else. It's going to be spending time around other people, interacting with other people. I mean, we wear shirts because we saw people wear shirts. We eat with a fart because we saw people eat with a fart. And, and likewise, in the spiritual context, what we have gained from somebody else, it's our duty to give it away to someone else. It's it's a it's a the the same spark that that uh, that that uh, showed up on the day of Pentecost the same match that was lit we're still partaking from that same match that was lit during Pentecost so if you will the Holy Spirit and so this is a this is a faith tradition which means what we got we owe tomorrow. Uh, the benefit of having it, we got to pass it down. There's no other way for them to get it. Yes, go ahead, Brother Ware. Uh, 
could if you could look at the top of the page on that? page uh 99 yes sir and i think that's the definition that tony evan wants us to have he says uh, it is the responsibility of every kingdom man to take the kingdom inheritance and share it with mm -hmm. others. That's our assignment. It said, this is the process of discipleship. R watch this now. It is the process where one kingdom man mm -hmm. takes the value of the kingdom and transfer them to another who will transfer them to another man. That is Tony Evans' redemption of what a kingdom inheritance is. And we cannot miss that. Yes, How can sir. we be on assignment? We don't know what our assignment is. That is what, and every one of you guys who said that somebody poured into you the values of the kingdom, that is what a kingdom inheritance is. You are the recipient of a kingdom inheritance. Now, what is your assignment? To pass it on to someone else. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Sir. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead, Brother like, William. Um, I'm sorry, I mean, I, I, think, I think the top of page uh, 100 makes it sweet and simple. <laughs> it's the transferring of kingdom values. That first, that first statement that says the transferring of kingdom values. I, th I think that's, I think that's it in a nutshell. That's pretty much what Brother Ware just got through saying. You transfer your 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 Christian your values onto somebody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, sir. Now, um, Brother Williams, while you're there, can you go ahead and do me a favor? Can you read 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 2 for me? Okay. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard. The things which you have heard from the from me in the presence of many witnesses. And trust these faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Yes, yeah, so that in itself is what we've been talking about, the sharing the information, passing it from one man to another in order to provide that information to other individuals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give me one second. Oh, let me go to my notes. I apologize. It, it, is, it is sharing the information in, in its process itself. It's, it's training people in the spiritual way of life under the underwear, uh, excuse me, undeserved favor and received by the following Christ. So for me, um, I, I can tell my story about how God has taken me from being a diabetic to being someone who has a transplant. And, and I can speak about that. I don't have to lie about it. I don't have to, I don't have to get a pen and create a story. I can myself provide that information. And in that conversation, I can share that with Brother Ware. And if Brother Ware didn't know anything about God, then myself, I can say, well, this is where God has brought me. And I can tell That's you so why. Right, I, I can tell you why. That's firsthand knowledge. There's no, there's no if ands or buts about it. And then with that, I can continue to share that information from to Brother Ware, and then Brother Ware can then talk to Brother Williams. So at that point, we are transferring that information, and then at the same time, we can get deeper into the conversation and talk about the scripture itself. And and then that is transferring of that spiritual growth, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Uh. May I inject this? Yes, sir. Feel free, Brother Kelly. Uh, yes. You know, as uh, one of the prophets said, you can listen to the word all day, but to get the full understanding of it, you need to read it in, with concentration to understand what it says. And uh, as Elijah said, you got to eat the word and digest it to really understand it. And just listening to it is good, but to get a full understanding, you got to listen and read it. Read it for yourself over and over and live what you are reading and talking about. Erwin Johnson has his hand up as well. Uh, Anthony, yep. your, your phone is on. Hello. You're on mute. You're on mute, Anthony. Go ahead, Brother Johnson. I'm sorry. Uh, Hello. Yes, I was uh, looking at the scripture where Paul was telling Timothy to be strong 
And it was quite obvious that Paul may have felt Timothy was a little feeble, maybe, or he might have been a little bashful or shy. And so that's why he was yeah. telling him to be, to be strong. And uh, and I, I kind of likened that to when we train new deacons, uh, we try to prepare them as much as possible for the task at hand, which uh, if you've been a deacon, anybody on here that is a deacon or have been a deacon know that it can be it can be a, a, a huge test and, and it can try your faith. And um, so that's why Paul was telling him. And that's what and what what it kind of relates to is that strong brothers need to pass on the word to other brothers who may. Uh, not necessarily be weak or feeble, I'm feeble, or just maybe a little shy, or don't feel like they have the confidence to talk about the word because uh, that. And like Brother Kelly was saying, study to show thyself approved. And once you study, then you gain a little confidence. Uh, because I know at one time uh, I was unsure about even speaking you know, about the word of God, because I wasn't sure whether I was, I knew what I was talking about, or I didn't want to lead anybody astray. So that's why you have to study as brother Kelly was saying. And then, uh, you can, cause Timothy eventually became, uh, a, a strong, uh, uh, you know, sp spokesman or well, ambassador. Even, yes, sir. Brother Josh, I think there were, that's where uh second Corinthians 12 comes into play as well. Uh, second Corinthians right. 12 and 9. Yes, sir. right. I, yes, sir. And I believe my, my father was talking to me earlier. He was saying that uh he mentioned that Timothy was 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 a little he wasn't as strong as he needed to be. Uh right. so Timothy talks about that in its entirety, right? It, it talks about him mm -hmm. not being strong, and he was trying to give him, he was saying that God is telling him, Don't worry about it, I got you. Wherever you are, I'm going to provide, right? And then even right. in that, even in that, if you look at Second Timothy. Chapter one and two twenty. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. Give me one second. I apologize. I skipped over something. It, it's talking about the inheritance. Give me a second. Why are you looking it up? Can I say something right quick? Because you yes, went sir. to yes, Corinthians, Second Corinthians, where it says, "My grace is sufficient for you. Yes, sir. For my strength is made perfect in weakness." Uh, yes, sir. You know, when when you're weak, that that's when you're word. strong. And then he told yes. you to put on whole armor, you know, which he tells you the different parts of the armor in order so that you may be strong. Yes, sir. And I was saying I wanted to mention Second Timothy one and five. We're talking about the transferring, right? We're talking about, and it says Second Timothy one and five. When I call remembrance for unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt at first in my grandmother Lois and my mother Eunice, and I pursue that in thee also. That is in itself inheritance, right? That is three generations. That's two generations there. That's the grandmother and mother and now you. So you have inherited that. You have been in this place where God has given you the word and now it, it's family. It, it's that, you can even say it's a grandmother, it's a, it's a mom. So you've gotten that information and I, and I wanted to mention that as well. Go ahead. Let, can I throw in a little something about that, Timothy? Yes, now, sir, go ahead. Now Timothy, it wasn't that he was weak. It was he he was young, and so okay. Paul Paul didn't want him to be intimidated because of his youth. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing you know to think about mm -hmm. on that. So you know Paul didn't want him to get up there and be intimidated because of the elders saying, "Oh, well, you too young. You can't do this." So that was the thing there. Just want to throw oh. that out. Also, yes, we yes. find that experience gains strength. I, I didn't hear you that well, Brother Keller. Can you repeat yourself? Yeah. Experience in the word, you gain strength through experience. The more you talk about it, the stronger you get in it, if you live it. Yes, sir. And it's also understanding, Brother Kelly, that you know every, all the seasoned deacons who are in here, if you look at it as Brother Joseph is saying, he was young. Well, if you reach out to those seasoned deacons, you have seen it's been consistent. You have been in your word a lot. You know more than I have because I haven't been in my word as much. You've been consistent. So I should reach out to you because you can start talking to me a little bit more and you can help me find out where I'm weak at, right? So therefore, I know for sure 
Brother Johnson has been in the Word a long time. Brother Ware has been in the Word a long time. So you can provide that information where I'm, I am a little short at because I'm not aware of that. Um, also, it said men's school, men's church school. I'm not sure who that is. Paul Davis. Brother Davis. Brother Anthony, I, th I think uh, in his book, in his actual book, uh, Kingdom Men Rising, Tony Evans addresses that. He talks about a story I thought was very interesting because I don't, I don't follow sports, but most of you guys do. He talked about this NFL player who became paralyzed, and now you've seen him on the circuit on different talk shows, and he's talking about having a difficult conversation with a black man, and uh, and he and he's talking about this transfer of faith. He's talking about that in there, and he he mentioned you you started out saying that's something you have to interact with people with to actually transfer that faith. Well, he talks about this. He says. That young man actually grew up in my church. His daddy was a, had a PhD and he was on my staff. We often ate together in the home. And I think that's where that interaction takes place, uh, Brother Hawk, is, is, is sitting time, a lot of times, just talking at the dinner table. So he talks right. about that guy. Now he's on all these circuits on TV. I've seen him on Good Morning America and how to have a difficult conversation. And it's all about racism. And he says in that... As he listened to the guy talk, he heard several of the things that he had told him, that he had taught him. And he said he, he wasn't boasting. Tony Evans was saying, I felt so good because I had transferred the faith. And now this guy was reaching millions of people doing the same thing. And that's mm -hmm. what you, we do when we, when we reach just one person and that person reach another one. But that comes from interaction. And he said he felt so proud to hear this guy, see this guy on this national show saying some of the very things that he had heard he, Tony Evans say at the dinner table. That's where we got to go. What if our, our kids, what if our children heard her say at the dinner table, brother? Because that's where that happens. And I think I'm on, the, I hope I'm on the right track with what you're talking about here. Okay. Yes, Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. I would definitely say you are. That That's where it is. It's that sharing of information. It's almost like being in high school when you don't have the answers and you studied the night before, you, you, you have some answers and they're going to share it with you. They're going to talk about it so you understand what that is. So when you go into class the next day, you can have a conversation about it. And you can speak freely and be confident about the word that you're providing. So I, I definitely agree with you with that one. <clears throat> so it, it says, and we're still in 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. It says, who disciples you? Who can you disciple? Who can answer that question for me? Actually, again, Hawkins, you're saying who disciples you or who, who, who can you, you disciple? Yes, Say, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, both sides you? of it. Who can disciple? Yes, sir. One is oops. Brother Woods. Brother Woods. Woods, I think he's frozen or something. Somebody I else. On, my bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, who disciples me is some of you brothers not right here are discipling me here on Kingdom Man. Because you know, I know that I still have a lot of room to grow. And, and I can tell you right now, it's rubbing off. But the second part of that question, who can I disciple? And that's everyone around me, starting with my son and people in my family other family members so and this cycle should never end yes sir. anyone else uh, and, and I, I think built into that question he's might he may be arguing that there are some people you can't disciple and the question is why can't you disciple them you can't it, disciple them if you don't have if you haven't been discipled or you can't disciple people you don't have contact with, you need to be present to disciple somebody. Well, Reverend Washington, based on that question that you just, that statement you just made, how would you, would you agree with this statement that people who have not been discipled, chances are they won't disciple anyone else? Yes, sir. And I think people, that's a certainty. Uh-huh. And that people who have been discipled, Chances are they'll they'll be good at discipling others. Amen. I agree, sir. 
Mm-hmm. Well, Reverend Washington, I would have to say the first the first thing with any of that, you have to be a child of God first in order to do anything. You no, I think there's yourself. there's no partisan with discipling. Discipling is attached to goodness or badness. You can disciple anybody, anything. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. And I, I was listening to all you guys who, who you uh, asked a question, who discipled them or who, st- who impacted yes. their lives. And yes. every one of them talked about their father. A lot majority of the guys said that their fathers was the one who impacted them or influenced them in the in the walk that they're in right now. And that led me to kind of think that the best environment to disciple someone, the best environment is in the home. That's the best way to environment. And that's God's ideal place to start discipling is with your children. And that's all of our our uh, jobs to do is disciple our children. Of all you guys who said that your father was the one who impacted you the most, well, I tell you, your father was a kingdom man. He might not have known it, but he was definitely a kingdom man and doing the work of a kingdom man by the pouring into his children what someone else poured into him and see how it continues to grow. You guys on this call tonight are pouring in everything that your father's Poured into you to, into someone else, man. So, I think that's I think that's the best environment in which to disciple. Because I I believe that when you get when a child get up to fifteen years old, if he hasn't been disciple, it's gonna be hard to to for him to be disciple. Not that it's impossible, but it's gonna be very difficult, like an uphill battle, to see that done. Thank you. You have something else to say, Reverend Washington? Yeah, I want to clean up what I said because I, I mean, we, we, and I, I don't, I think you're doing a fantastic job. We need to keep in mind though, many of us are being discipled, but it doesn't mean good discipleship. You, you, you're learning everything you learn, everything uh-huh. you got or you get from the person in your proximity. You're gonna take it on. If, if you, if you look in your house, if you got bookshelves, for example, if you got books that's been there for 10, 20 years or something like that. You'll notice how the color on one is rubbing off on the other. It's because they're in proximity of one another. And the longer they're in proximity of one another, they transfer. And likewise, we're the same thing as we grow up, especially as youth. We're like sponges, man. We take in anything, anything new, fresh, and heavy. We take it in and we 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 make it ours. But we've got to be cautious in what we're trying to teach tonight. Because discipling can be bad or good. I know we're just innately saying good, but there's stuff I've learned badly. I've been discipled both ways, you know, and I just want to make sure we keep that in mind. Because some of us, some of the bad habits or practices that we unfortunately care, we got from our family. Uh, we got from a big brother or from a father. But that can be recycled. Jesus took them in to recycle them. He took them in to recycle them to his kingdom discipleship and i i just don't want to leave that dangling like that so excuse me for jumping in there no problem brother o'neill yes sir i, I want to piggyback off of what pastor washington was saying because i can definitely uh relate especially being in the field that i was working in particularly when i was working with gangs with the street gangs because you can definitely be discipled both ways good and bad and then just to go on another note I think that discipling is a continual process because I rededicated my life to Christ when I was in my mid to late 20s. And then when I got to Lily Grove, I started getting discipled all over again. So it's like now I have mentors who I look up to, who I listen to. You know, I think about the time when I was at my lowest and, and, and I wanted to quit being a Sunday school superintendent. I wanted to leave all that alone. And Pastor Washington wouldn't let me quit. (laughs) But the things that he said to me, the encouragement that he gave me, it kept me pushing. And so in actuality, he was discipling me because he kept pushing me closer to the Lord. And and I kept studying. I kept praying. And all of a sudden, I saw the Lord continuously delivering me. I heard it being said earlier about like Deacon Johnson was talking about uh, the newer deacons coming in. We have mentors. We're consistently being disciples. So this process is a continual process of us being disciples because I know me for sure. I have not arrived. And so yeah. since I know I have not arrived, I need to be continually discipled. Amen to that. Understood. Brother Thompson? 
uh, this is probably for, for Brother Ware. Is there a difference between uh, discipling and then being a role model? Mm. <laughs> a role a model be bad or good? Well, the, the <laughs> disciple, we yeah. can do the same thing. It we can disciple do it or bad. Discipling for. All of a sudden, Brother West's speaker went out. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know, man. Got quiet. That's, that's a good one right there. I don't know. Uh, being a role model, I don't know. Was, I guess that was just teaching a person on how to act. But discipleship is pretty much teaching them, I don't know, transforming the kingdom values. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure on that. But let me just shut my mouth and pass that question on to someone else. Brother West, I'm not... Brother, where I'd have to say there is a difference. If it you do. think about it, there's a difference because discipleship is you're in the word of God, right? That's where you mm -hmm. are, right? You can be a role model and know nothing about God at all. And you can just tell somebody, hey, man, you need to stop doing it. That does not mean that you're a disciple. That just means you're trying to correct them. You're trying to tell them which way to go. And hey, stop doing that. But a disciple, it says you're sharing that information from that you've heard from one brother to another. So that means you're going and you're listening to the word of God. That means you're in a setting, whether it be church, where it's in the Kingdom Men's Academy, where it's a, a devotion between your family. You have information that you have brought in and then you are sharing it with somebody else. That is biblical, not just information that you have heard from somebody and you're just going to go ahead and just give that out to somebody else at another time. Uh, okay, very good. Can the brothers hear me? Go ahead, I'm sorry. This is Brother Kevin Washington. I'm sorry, I'm on the phone. I'm driving. That's why I'm not on team. Uh, for me, uh, and I, I'm enjoying all the dialogue, the back and forth, but for me, discipleship, you've got to be hands-on with that person, uh, leading them, guiding them. A role model, you can be a role model from any distance. You know, you can be a role model if you're an athlete, if you're an entertainer, and somebody's just following you, but they don't have hands-on connections with you. Uh, my understanding. I could be off base. Excellent. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Very good, Kevin. Who's, who's next? Let's see. Uh, commit to be fit. Uh, this is Brother Robinson again. Brother uh, Robinson. Brother, let me take a stab at that question. Uh, is there a difference between uh, role modeling and disciples? Is that what the question was? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. There is certainly a difference, and I agree with the last brother that uh, role modeling is from a distance. Remember the commercial Charles Barkley made? Yeah, I yeah. am not a role model. Nobody knew Charles Barkley in Houston personally, but those basketball players. But we as children kind of looked up to him for what he did. In terms of discipling, you're, you don't have to be a Christian to disciple someone. You know that there's a gang of disciples? Ask Brother O'Neill. They are disciples, right? Reverend Washington said, there are good and bad mentors and disciples. So we hope that you would disciple from a Christian standpoint, but it's not always the case. Yes, sir. Brother Hobbit? You know, I, 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 I'm kind of on the same line with Brother O'Neill because I've, I've dealt with all, all kind of... Uh, gangs in the prison system because I, I was a military policeman for 21 years in arms so I did both sides of the house the road the road cop and the, the side of the prison so I dealt with a lot of those gang members that he's talking about within the uh, army or should I say the military setting but getting back to the question there is a difference in discipleship and somebody asked me a question once not trying to be a role model, but just in conversation. And when I look at, at the difference in the two, even if you did try to be a role model, the question was asked of me, how far are you willing to go with me to make sure I get where you're trying to get me to go? So even in discipleship, we have to ask ourselves that, how far are you willing to go with them? Are you willing to put in that work that they're gonna need to help them where you can be a mentor and, and all that positive stuff as well as trying to stay away from all that negative. Now, the role model, yeah, you can do that from a distance or you can do it up close and personal. But then again, that question is going to come back up. 
how far are you willing to go to help me get there? I'm willing to listen, but if you're not willing to go that full ride with me, then why are you even talking to me? So, I mean, that that's my piece on that. Brother Carlos Jones? Yes, uh, I wasn't as fortunate as everybody else to have that father in their life. I mean, a dad in their life, so, but I had my father, which is God. So even though he wasn't there to be a role model or lead me in any kind of way, I did learn something from him. And I made an oath to God to be everything that he wasn't to my children and my grandchildren. So I'm a, with, every, with everything in me, I'm going to lead my family and my grandchildren and my children's children to the a path of the Lord. And I won't let nothing stop me from doing that. Good point. Bless you. Bless you, John. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Very good point. If, if, if I might be able to interject something is that uh, when you disciple it, someone, it doesn't have to be for a long time commitment, uh, a long time commitment. I think you can disciple someone for a for a short time, uh, just like uh, Paul Water, I mean, Apollos Water and somebody else do something else. I think you can mentor or you can disciple someone for a for a short period of time. Say, for instance, that you start discipling him. And for some reason, you you move out of town, they move out of town. Uh, that that doesn't that that still probably can, that person still can probably uh, be disciple. And I and I think you can also uh, disciple someone without them even knowing that they are being disciple. You can influence someone, and uh, it might take a while for that influence to to wear off. But uh, I think I've been in some situations to where it's, uh, I've been able to uh, disciple someone for a short period of time. And the reason why I'm able to say that is because uh, I have a, uh, I'm part of a ministry that goes into the, the jails and the prisons. And uh, I'm with those young men for maybe a couple of months. And then I might not ever see them again. But the, uh, the amount of time that I have spent with them uh, I wouldn't call it discipling. Uh, you mentoring them, but they, but they, I have done that without them even knowing it because they have then picked up something that I've been trying to teach them. So, okay, yes, sir, Brother Wood. Yes, I, uh, I have one more thing to add to uh, what uh, Brother Thompson and Brother Hobby was saying. And that is the difference between discipling and role model is discipling is for the long run. Because no, no matter what you do, once you disciple somebody, that's going to stick with them. But as far as a role model, I give Will Smith as an example. Everybody thought he was in uh, Bill Cosby. Everybody thought they were up and coming citizens, the best that the black community had to offer. It was all good until Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. And all of a sudden, nobody wanted to be Will Smith anymore. Same thing with Bill Cosby. He's a great role model, father of America, America's dad, until he got accused of all that sexual stuff. Now nobody wants to be like Bill Cosby anymore. So yeah, uh, a role model uh, can come and go with the wind, but a discipleship lasts forever. Yes, I, I, I would also like to say that it says in John 8, 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed in him, on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye my disciples indeed. So it's, it's one of those where you have to believe in God. And that's that long haul that you're talking about, right? That's that. That's what we're referring to, Brother Woods. And you're talking about it's a long haul. It's like, you got to believe in me. If you believe in me, that discipleship is, that's what we're, le we're looking for. And that's what we need. Uh, Reverend Washington. Thank you again. Great, great discussion. I, I have to go in there and just offer another little tweak there because Again, that needs to be, if you're going to disciple somebody, that needs to be a loyalty to there. And, and, and that means both people know about it. That, that's, that's what real disciple. Now, even though we do it by some type of osmosis or sometimes unbeknown, but that's not real discipleship. 
and and I think what what Will Smith models for us again is is he's a great role model, but he's still got sons to disciple, if you will. And so even though everybody else can drop him, and sometimes I guess parents can, but there's an obligation because of the relationship they have that he still remains a disciple of his children, whether they choose to dine anymore or not. And I think uh, the, to take us back to the original context, Brother Hawkins, and I think I probably veered us off wrong, but to take us back to the context, if we're going to be disciples, we do it on purpose. We do it deliberately, not accidentally. Even though people pay attention to us from a distance, discipling is a loyalty thing. It's not a, I'm not sure if I'm discipling them. If you're discipling somebody, and that's probably what's wrong with discipleship in 2023. We're discipling people and don't know it, or they 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 think they've been discipled, and we don't know it, or whatever. No, this is intentional. It, it's saying, hey, Hawkins, Hawkins says to Washington, hey, Reverend Washington, I want you to mentor me. I want you to disciple me. That's a verbal exchange. And that with that comes a loyalty and expectation. And I think maybe that's a healthier conversation is trying to get us to the point where we are doing this on purpose rather mm. than in the space of maybe so, maybe not. Because if I know somebody's watching me, I'm going to try to give them a better view of me versus somebody I don't even know if they're paying attention to me or not. And I think those things can make us more effective in the realm of discipling. Brother Hawkins, I uh, thank you for letting me speak there. No problem, no problem. Uh, well, that's what it says in discipleship. You're supposed to have those conversations about every and anything. And that is when you says it's it is a it's a long haul and it's a I'm giving you my time and we're going to actually talk about these things. And that's what the importance is. For me, I understand it and I do agree with you wholeheartedly. So um for me, I, I think that's for tonight that I'm gonna stop there. I would have liked to fit. I'm go ahead and stop there. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Brother Ware. So he can complete it for the rest of the night. And I do thank you all. And then next Monday, I'll continue and try to go ahead and, and wrap it up and, and try not to, to have too many more Mondays. But uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Hawkins. I think there was a good a conversation tonight, discussion tonight. And I think we learned something about our assignment. All of us, I believe, Reverend Washington, that we ought to be discipled by someone or discipling someone. Yes, sir. Or looking for this type. We ought to be in one of those stages. I believe. Um, let me ask this question, Reverend Washington. What is why do why aren't there not enough disciples? Why don't mm. people uh, want to disciple or choose or look for disciples or discipling someone? What's the major cause for that? Right. And that, that's a great. And I see Wendell's hand as well, Brother Ware. But I, I'm going to cheat and go ahead and say the right answer is there are people who have already disqualified themselves to, to mm -hmm. disciple. Um, what Brother O'Neill said, it was powerful because Darren O'Neill is a great man on this campus and a very useful tool in the hand of God. Just think if he thought into his emotions and decided, you know what, I'm not eligible to teach nobody nothing. Guess what? I've been there a lot of times, Darren. And, and mm -hmm. brothers, when you get to the point where, hey, man, I need to get somewhere to sit down. You don't need to be teaching nobody anything. But if that was the criteria who could God use? You know, he couldn't use anybody. So there's, mm -hmm. there's, we need we don't disciple, brother, where because many times the people can do it. We don't feel qualified or eligible to do it. And that may be one of the devil's plots is to make us disqualify ourselves. Very good. Very good. Um, Hobbly? You know, I'm going to piggyback off the pastor of Washington. But, I, but the first thing I want to say Discipleship is a commitment. Right. And when you're looking at the fact that that's what you're choosing to try to do, you got to be committed to do that. Yeah, yeah. And that commitment may even come down to the point of saying, okay, look, I've gone as far as, 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 far as the knowledge that I have to be able to, 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 to try to do a discipleship with a person. So what we do is iron sharpens iron, right? So there's a whole lot of brothers on this on this call tonight that might not be able to get to, from point A to B. Or should I say to C? But somebody else can can help you along. But you got to be willing to reach out and ask for that help to disciple or even to talk to somebody 
about discipleship. Don't just stop it because you can't do it. There's somebody else out there that might be able to help you along with that individual so that you don't lose an opportunity to save somebody. We've got to be committed. And, and, and to me, that's the whole key right there, is being committed when you start talking about discipleship. Because I go back to this, this prison uh, thing, you know, even though I was, I was a guard there, and some of the things that I did that God allowed me to do in the, in the environment that I was in, and, and Brother O'Neill, you know this, you can't walk around the prison with a, as, as an officer with a Gideon Bible in your pocket. That's not part of your uniform. But because of the way I work and what God put in place for me to be able to do that, a lot of people, you might not be a role model verbally, but people are watching. And when they see you standing on your word and you live it in front of them every day, no matter what, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing based on your job, but you also granted the opportunity to witness, it got to the point when I walked through that gate, Mr. Hobley, what's the word for the day? That wasn't me. That was God. He gave me an opportunity to stand up for him and witness to these inmates. We may be the last sermon they see. Hey, and if you've never been in that environment, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, Brother Thompson, and I know with, with, with Brother O'Neill being there, you know, like kind of like I was, you guys understand where I'm coming from. So that's what I had to say on that piece. Very good. I think that goes right along with the author says that discipleship takes boldness. You got to be bold. <laughs> you got to get out your comfort zone. Uh, Brother um, Is that Brother David, David? You said Dan up. Yeah, uh, brother, where your question was, why to run watch? Why isn't there enough uh, disciples? And I think you answered that question earlier when I got on. You said if you've never been disciple, then you can't disciple anybody. Uh, yeah. Tony Tony yeah. Evans talked about that too in his book. He says one of the problem is, and y'all were talking about it earlier, is we have not transferred that faith. If mm -hmm. I have not passed on my my biblical values to my children or to the people around me, the people that I have influence on. Those are the people that can go on and influence the next, can disciple the people. But I first got to pass on my biblical views to the people I have influence on. Yeah. Well, what I'm going with that, all that means is that's been a whole generations and generations back that people have not been passing on their biblical views. We're talking about sports. We're talking about everything about at the table mm -hmm. but the Lord, except the Lord. So we're not touching the people we have influence on. So that's been generation and generation and generation of that going on. And kingdom men can start that change today. We need to start today. And now we're we going to start talking about the Lord to the people that I have influence on so that they can talk about the Lord that they have. That's how we get back on track. Uh, but if you have not been discipled, then you cannot disciple anybody. And that's what I think. Very good. And just and last one for the Smith. Yeah, just piggyback what what uh, brother Dave just said. You know, if 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 your home is not a church, then you know don't don't expect to uh, to have any anything good. You know, come into the church uh, body itself. So know we we had mentioned this even before that our home should be the miniature church. Uh, the the father should be, you know, teaching. You know, you you should be the pastor in your home. Yeah, you your go. family, your there family you should go. come to you. For those for those answers that you know because you you're the you're the head god place you to be the head of the home there you go. There you place in my home. <laughs> yes sir <laughs> brother uh anthony uh what do we how do we prepare for next week what do next we week, do? We're, excuse me give me one second we're going to go ahead and i would suggest that you prepare for page 101 and then we're going to go into bible study two and b we're okay. going to try to get as much as bible study two done we're not gonna go fast but we're gonna get into it and have a good conversation and try to get as much as bible study to complete and then that way we'll, we'll be ready for that but that what i suggest you do that is page 101 102 and 103. very good thank you so much uh, brother hawkins for uh mm -hmm. leading us through this discussion and finding out what our assignment is so we'll understand it better and better and we can do it in a more efficient way thank you so much brother uh brother mm -hmm. willis robinson so we're going to pass the baton and put it in your hands. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, 
Yeah, I heard you. Just settle down. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Brother Michael Johnson to do the first prayer. Deacon Leonard Harris, if you would do the second prayer. And of course, Brother Willie Bolden, if you would uh, do the brother, the uh, the Kingdom Men's Oath. And again, thank you, Brother Hawkins, for your Okay, we gonna buy. Well, we've done it. Watch you, but if you can mute this, if we can this issue. Okay, uh, thank you, Brother Robinson. I, I appreciate that. We had a great time tonight. Uh, I really, really thank God for the lecture and the discussion, and I hope you brothers felt enriched. Like, I, Leon, you are going to have to mute yourself, man. That's, that's, Leon, there you go. You probably just got to drop him out there. <laughs> that's the guy. He, he's a. That's that's the that's the commander's brother. So I can't be dropping him off our call, man. That'd be wrong, man. <laughs> you leave my brother alone. He can make all the noise he wants. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't want to keep us too long, but it, we had a great session tonight. Great discussion. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, work at the Johnson Space Center at, at Houston's NASA, well, Clear Lake NASA for several few years before I came to work here at the church. And it dawned on me how much money they spend uh, for a lot of their training. But one area that they spend tons of money on is food because they've got to, uh, uh, they're going into space and they're trying to figure out uh, uh, how much, how they're going to eat and all that. And I realized the reason why they spend that much money and do that because it's necessary. <laughs> It's necessary. If you're going to go out of space and survive and make it back, you have to eat. If you're going to go underwater and in a submarine, they've got to eat on a ship. They've got to eat all those things. Those are necessities. And what we're talking about here as kingdom men is all about necessities and discipling is a necessity. We're going to carry this so-called gospel forward. We've got to not only get it in us, but we've got to carry it forward, transfer it forward. And that's how important uh, the Kingdom Men's Academy needs to be to each one of us is there's a life down the road that's dependent on you. There's a there's a there's a project God wants to get done in our future, but we've got to pass it forward. So I, I am very tuned into our lesson that uh, 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 truth and justice are dealing with here, because this is critical. If, if this doesn't work, we can shut all this down. If we're not going to transfer uh, the the knowledge of God, if we're not going to transfer divine truth forward, this is a huge waste of time. So I'm very interested in our topic, and hopefully we'll continue to gain from their lectures and those kind of things. So thank you, everybody, for making the night great. We had Brother Kelly with us tonight. Hadn't seen him for a little bit, but glad he was able to join us tonight. And I'm, I've gone on the list a couple of times. I'm not sure who's new other than Brother Burton. Ernie, he just dropped in, but Brother Burton, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, hopefully, uh, again, we'll be big and we'll keep on growing, but we're closing out this year. So uh, we got a little more little more uh, ground to cover ahead of us, but we're going to get there. So thank you, everybody, for an outstanding night and an outstanding season. Uh, special prayer requests, uh, what have you, let us know. Uh, but let's keep one another in prayer. Brother Robinson, I think that's about all. I don't think I have anything else to say. Reverend Washington, could you, um, Pastor made an announcement about how the church campus is going to be transformed into a Christmas theme. Can you brief us on what you know about that? Yeah, uh, the pastor say the, tra the camp is going to be transformed and we're going to be excited about what it looks like. <laughs> well, we, you I me. promise you, I, I have no idea. I had a discussion oh, about that this morning. Nobody knew what it knew what it meant, but we we're excited about it. So we we're definitely trusting his word. <laughs> oh, okay, well, thank you, thank you, Reverend Washer. Really, <laughs> brother, brother, if Mark I may say so. something before we move on, brother Robinson. Say it again. Uh, too often we don't uh, commend our young brothers and encourage them. I would just want to commend Brother Hawkins for his commitment to the study the word and to do the facilitation in, in this in, in this topic. Uh, we often take for granted people know that we appreciate them and especially our young brothers need to be encouraged. So Brother Hawkins, thank you for studying and facilitating our lesson. Outstanding job, brother. Outstanding job. Great, great, great call.
Thank you, Brother uh, William. Brother Johnson, are you still here with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. If you would offer the first prayer and then uh, Leonard Harris. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we want to thank you for your provisions and your protection from the moment you woke us up up until this moment, Lord. We thank you for all the brothers who were able to be present this evening. And we pray for those who may have wanted to be here, but for one reason or another was not. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you were able to use through Brother Hawkins and Brother William. We thank you, Lord. We just pray that you will just order our step, Lord, to be those disciples to those individuals that we meet, individuals in our family, Father, so that we can pass on your treasure of your inheritance of your word so that everybody that we speak your gospel to, Father, can grow in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. I, I thank God for all of the brothers who I've met here who have discipled me. That's allowed me to grow in your word, Father. We thank you for our pastoral leadership with Pastor Anderson, Reverend Washington, Reverend Lewis, and the other reverends on the roster, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing with this ministry, Father, and we pray that we will continue to grow, that we can be the salt of the earth that you have sprinkled us to be all over the world, flavoring the world with your word and your grace of who you are. We thank you, Lord. We love you. And we pray, Lord, that we will just continue to grow together in unity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious fathers, we come before you. We continue in prayer, Father, behind what Brother Johnson has asked and committed to us. Specific to our lesson tonight, Father, we come thanking you, first of all, for all the leaders of these kingdom men. We always want to thank Pastor Washington for uh, all that he do uh, for the sake of the kingdom, Father. We come tonight asking you, Father, to help us realize where we are as men on assignment and what that assignment is. Make us men, Father, of truth and justice, Father. Help us, Father, to share the good news, not be hearers only, but doers of your word. Help us, Father, to let our light so shine among men that, mm -hmm. they, see, that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which you never. We ask, Father, if, uh, help us to be the disciples that you're calling for men of boldness and committed, Father, men that are aware of our surrounding and who we serve, Father, men of love, Father, with commitment, Father, that we may pass on that inheritance, that spiritual inheritance, Lord, the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. We ask that you bless each and every one of us today, Father. Let us continue to be a part of this growing ministry and to share it, Father, outside of the four walls of the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Mm. Continue to bless us, as always, our pastor, Father. We ask that you grant them a healthy and long life, if it be mm. your will, Father. And then bless each and every person that was a participant on this study tonight, particularly our young leader, Brother Hawkins, Lord, is well led and facilitated, Lord. And we thank you for him and other young men, Father, that is coming behind some of us that are old. We thank you for them stepping up and picking up the torch, Father, growing the kingdom of God. Bless Amen. now every voice that was lifted up in your program. And we pray for all that we have heard here tonight. Let us put it into our hearts and act upon it. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. 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 As a kingdom man, I stand. As a kingdom, kingdom, man, as a kingdom man, man, I stand, stand to acknowledge my position in Christ. My place in my home. My place in my home. My, place in my, home. my potential for service in my church. And my purpose in the world. As a kingdom man, I stand. As a kingdom man, I stand. Acknowledge my position in Christ. My place in my home. 
My, my potential for service in my church. And my purpose in the world. And my purpose in the world. Amen. Amen. Bless you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good night. Great night. Great night. Great night. Great night. Thank you. Great night. Thank you, everybody. Thank Brother you. Matthew, good to see you, Ron. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. It's always a pleasure to be here. All right. Gerald Brown, where are you, Gerald? What about you, Gerald? I was saying, what with Gerald? Gerald's probably around the country somewhere. I guess he's already gone. <laughs> I got one thing to make everybody mad.